Greetings people, it's Jared here, Wolfgang1 back to do another Transformers review because obviously it's been a while since I've uh, done one of those um, and it's been a while since I've done one of these actually so um, I've sort of reviewed a bit of new shit recently uh, even though I was one of those collectors back in the day who said oh I don't collect new shit because it's not G1 because obviously I was a dickhead I thought what I'd do is I'd actually do a G1 okay um, and I'm screen mirroring this again at the moment, so forgive me if I start going, oh, I don't know where the camera is, because it's really not as easy as it looks. Um, but we are going to go back into the midst of time, 1985, uh, ladies and gents, and we are going to be doing Transformers Generation 1 Thrust. Right, so this is what I was talking about. Uh, Generation 1 Thrust, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I was going to do G1 Ironhide, because there's um, stuff I want to talk about that toy uh, that I'm not happy with, and it's got nothing to do with the fact that it's you know, he hasn't got a head or any of that shape. It's got everything to do with uh, the build quality on the figure that I've got. But I'll come on to that when I do the review. The only reason I'm doing Thrust is because his box was at the top of the boxes and I don't know where Ironhide's is. Um, but this is this is how Thrust would have looked um, back in the good old days of 1985 when he was new on the shelves, except that the box would have been in bad condition. Um, I don't have the insert for it. And I thought this guy was complete, but it turns out that I think I'm missing... Um, his long machine gun things. Uh, if I have got them, I have no fucking idea where they are. For, for the purposes of this review, we're going to say that it's incomplete but in good nick. All right, so here we are. Generation 1 thrust, and as you can see in the background there, be Captain Spaulding licking his arse off. Absolutely fantastic. Thanks, Spaulding. Appreciate it, mate. So, uh, so yeah. Now, the Seekers um, were basically one central body uh, in different colours with different uh, coloured accessories. Some of them might have been the same, some of them would have been remoulded, as is the case with this guy. Um, his wings and his tail fins were remoulded, but essentially it's a seeker body. So 35 or 30 years ago plus, or 35 years ago, they were putting the same shit with repaints that they do now. So nothing's really changed in terms of Hasbro's um, ethic towards its customers. Um, find the basic design, knock out seven figures around that design, and then reap the rewards. And of course, you know, I don't believe parents are buying toys for their children as much as they used to back in our day, ladies and gentlemen. So it's basically pricks like me who are going out and spending the money on a repaint or a retool of a figure that's essentially you get seven, the same thing on one shelf. So they were doing the same thing back then, but back then they were using metal along with uh, die cast metal along with the plastic. There's something that works in that. Um, so I'm willing to let their shady business practices go for now. Um, on the back of the box, um, and I love these boxes, I love these old style boxes, and they started doing these again with the um, uh, the reissues of Soundwave and things like that. And it looks amazing because it's all crispy new and everything like that, but I do have an original in its original box that isn't too bad uh, for almost the same price that they're trying to charge nowadays for the reissues, that's shit. On the back of the box you've got this wonderful, wonderful artwork that as the years progressed they got more and more shit. Uh, in the MicroMasters line, it ended up just being, you know, the sort of drawing that was done by someone with locked-in syndrome, right? This, on the other hand, is absolutely phenomenal artwork. I'm going to try and just get a little bit closer there, ladies and gentlemen, because when I start recording, this camera doesn't like to zoom in or any of that shit, but take a moment just to experience the vibrancy and the wow factor that's associated with this picture. This is what being a four-year-old kid was all about, right? All this shit here. Bright 80s nonsense. And normally in these videos, what I do is I go, oh, so I'm going to cut and shape, then get them to the figure. But this is simple. All I've got to do is open the box, take the fucker out, and here he is. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Generation 1 Thrust. Again, I tried recording this just now, and it wouldn't fucking zoom in, because uh, my fucking head's in the way. Uh, I've got Decepticon logo just on there in silver. Please zoom, you cunt. Focus, or just focus. Great, that's about as good as I'm going to get that. Uh, and he's in great nick. He's in great, I, I took a, a set of rep label stickers from years and years ago. Um, because when I got this guy for eBay, he looked like a shabby piece of shit. Uh, and so did Thundercracker, actually. I'll do a review on him one day. Um, but here is here is Thrust. Um, he So the wings have been remoulded, the tail fins have been remoulded, and he's been decked out in a, in a different colour scheme. Um, but essentially it's the same thing as Starscream, except Starscream was an F-15, was it, an F-15? And I think this is supposed to be an F-15 VTOL variant, a plane that doesn't exist, or at least to my knowledge doesn't exist. But he 
he is vibrant and after all these years still sexy as fuck ladies and gentlemen i think you'll agree so let's have a look at some of the things that he came with he came with um two of these detachable wings and the thing about the seekers is they were parts formers back in the day so two of those two of these detachable fucking things from the back tail fins that's it um one landing gear which is the parts that everybody used to lose. So imagine when these came up on eBay. Focus, you fucking cocksucking son of a bitch. Right, well, it's not going to do that, but I've taken my word. Uh, everyone used to lose these and uh, trying to find one on eBay, uh, right, sort of five, ten years ago, and that would have cost you anywhere between about seven and ten quid. So there we are. Plug that on the bottom of him. And. Uh, there he is, he's got his little landing gear, which is which is a shitty little gimmick, but I like it. Um, he also comes with uh, two of the standard Seeker fists. Uh, these ones moulded in black. Again, the camera's not focusing. I'm giving less and less of a fuck on that. He comes with two uh, the standard Starscream Seeker missile launcher things. Oh, fuck me, there it is. Um, and they're all kitted out in black. That's lovely. Two of these little missiles. I've just dropped one of them. Prick. There are two of these little missiles, um, and it comes with two uh, of the original Seeker machine gun things that I can't find. So, um, let's just stick the missile launcher in there, plug the missile launchers on the bottom of the wings, and, uh, yeah, do that. And that is him complete in, uh, in jet mode. Uh, if, if you want to imagine that he's flying around, imagine that you're a five-year-old and he's flying around like this and everything like that, then you take the landing gear off and he looks absolutely gorgeous. In fact, he, he'd look even more gorgeous if the camera would focus. Uh, I'm not asking a lot out of life, just that I can get this review done, maybe, you know, a couple of other things. Here we are. So there we are. He looks decent. He's a little bit loose in places. I might have to take him apart and do a restoration job just to like sort of tighten the joints a little bit. But essentially, after and he's got a little bit of uh, bite wear and a little bit of damage to the nose cone and everything like that that you can't see because the camera's not focusing. Fuck you, royally, right? But essentially, he's in very, very decent condition for a toy of his age. Um, and we're going to go ahead and transform this little fella because I don't want this to go on too long. I'm nearly 10 minutes in and I've said absolutely nothing of interest. Uh, which I think you'll find is a running theme throughout the videos that I've done over the course of the last 10 years, right? So here we are. To transform him, we're going to take the weapon pods off the bottom of the uh, wing. So we've got the basic thing again. Let's start by standing it up and flipping down these two bottom sections. These will eventually form the feet. Okay, there we are. Uh, rotate the wings forward just for the time being and then break the cockpit away from this section here try to do this on camera is not easy there we are and then separate the nose cone section from the cockpit on that expansion joint just there there we are and that's on a double hinge and then use the nose cone well actually you can use your finger i used to, i used to like use the nose cone there you bend it around and then you poke the nose cone through so you push these two sections at the back apart like that and then they come out the back and on their little fucking hinge swivel things whatever the fuck they're supposed to be they're supposed to flip out the problem the problem with the seeker mold is sometimes they get stuck there we are so fold those around to the uh i'm not showing any of this this is bollocks fold them out to the sides push the nose cone through the center of the body And then bring the uh, cockpit down, bring the head up, and then basically attach the fists to the arms. Again, what I was saying, parts former. Attach the weapon pods to the side of the arms, which I thought was a lovely little storage gimmick. Hold on. What's going on there? That's it. There I lost my screen mirror for just a moment there. It all could have gone wholly wrong. And then position the wings basically behind the tail fins by taking them off and putting them back on again. And normally with the Seeker mold, what you're supposed to do is, is 
flip the head, the nose cone section, back like that. Um, but to try and differentiate them from the original seekers, what they did was a mis on a mistransformation, they left the nose cone up, and that ended up um, influencing the animation model, so they were known as the cone heads. Um, yeah, not to be confused with the Dan Aykroyd film of the same name, you know, the one that wasn't funny. Um, so there we are. So there's Generation 1 Thrust in all his glory. I'm just waiting for this fucking camera to focus again. Thank you, Jesus, fuck. And look at that. I mean, I've put a set of rep label stickers on him. Um, so he pops now even more than he did when I first got him. This is basically as close to looking as he did when he was first bought 35 years ago by some you know, unlucky plebs parents. And despite the fact that the camera's not focusing, um, which is really, really, really pissing me off, there we are, he is absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. And I love, and I've always loved the Seeker mold. I've loved the Seeker mold in terms of the G1s. When it came to the masterpiece, the first masterpiece I got was that Skywalk one, not entirely convinced, but when they remolded it and then tried charging everybody even more money for the same toy, um, I like I like the uh, remolded masterpiece better, and I've got the masterpiece of this guy in the um in the cabinet. I've never really fucked around with it, um, but the G1 Seeker is always the one I will go back to if I want to fuck around with a uh, with a Seeker jet. The colours, the 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 sort of burgundy uh, burnt red um, offset against the black, I think is a wonderful wonderful little addition, um, and really does make the figure. It just looks fantastic, even with the extra moulded parts on it, like the wings and everything like that. And this is why I always liked Thrust in the 80s. I would have loved to have had him, but let's face it, uh, if it had been anything like Starscream, Sky, um, Ramjet, I'd have just lost the fucking parts anyway, so it would have just been a body that was half broken. Um, and if, if I can get this potsy fucking camera that's supposed to be like really, really sharp to focus, focus! Um, it even comes with a set of stickers for the eyes, that it's not going to show you. And in fact, that's getting worse. That's getting fucking worse. How is that getting worse? If I, right, if I basically hold the toy up to about here, right, you can see what a lovely fucking figure it is. If I get any closer than that, right, you can forget it. Even though that's supposed to be a really nice camera, you're not going to see fuck all. So let's just say, if I keep it there, right, you can all sit there and marvel and go, oh, what a wonderful fucking toy, I wish I had one. If I bring it any closer, it's going to look like vomit, right? Um, would I recommend getting one? Yes, I would recommend getting one. Because let's face it, if you can find a complete one for a decent price, fantastic. It's G1. That's not an issue. Go for it. Fucking get one. Chances are you're either going to have to restore it, buy the parts off eBay, which will cost you more than you want. Um, but the end result, and get a set of uh, rep labels from Toy Hacks or whatever. The end result is exactly what you're going to see here. A sturdy, wonderfully built, lovely little... Th um, Lovely little piece of history there from 1985 when toys were fucking awesome um, as opposed to half the shit that children are forced to put up with these days. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen. That's my review. That's gone on for 13 and a half minutes. Um, do hope you enjoyed it. It was more of a pain in the ass than I wanted it to be. Um, but I've got a feeling if I'm going to do all my toy reviews on this phone in future, that's exactly what I've got to look forward to. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be back at some point soon. Um, I've got some more stuff that I want to do. I will do episode 3 of Subnautica at some point. I am going to start a second series of 7 Days to Die. I might even do a uh, a video series on another game if I can think of it. Um, which evidently at the moment I can't. So thanks very much for watching this one. Do hope you enjoyed yourselves. I haven't put you to sleep. I'm working on it. And uh, until we see each other again... Take care of yourself, so I'm going to try and learn how to actually use this screen mirror thing. Because, um, let's face it, I'm not doing a very good job of it. Um, until then, take care.